Hello guys, welcome to Metten. Today we are going to discuss about the anatomy of spleen. So general functions we will discuss about spleen. What are, what are the functions that spleen does? It filters blood by removing the damaged RBCs and it will also manufacture RBCs in the fetal life and lymphocytes after birth. It will provide immunity to the body and by producing the IgM cells and it will also store RBCs and release them in circulation when required. Coming to location of the spleen, we know that the abdomen is divided into nine regions, right? These nine regions, we will name all of them. This one is the epigastrium, right hypochondrium, left hypochondrium, right lumbar region, left lumbar region, umbilical region, right iliac fossa, left iliac fossa, and hypogastrium. Spleen is located in the left hypochondrium. Left hypochondrium. It is located in the left hypochondrium between the fundus of the stomach and diaphragm. Generally, it, it lies in the long axis of 10th rib. You will find ribs like this. The 9th, 10th and 11th ribs. The spleen is located in the long axis of the 10th rib. Like this. Long axis of the 10th rib. And uh, size of the spleen. Spleen is uh, almost the size of fist of a subject and it is wedge shaped. Different types of shapes I will tell. It is generally wedge shaped. Loc located in the left hypochondrium lies along the long axis of 10th rib and situated along the in the below the mid axillary line along 9th, 10th and 11th ribs. Now we are going to discuss about different types of spleen. Types of Spleen. The first thing that we are discussing is wedge shaped spleen. A. Wedge shaped. It occurs among 44% of individuals and it is somewhat like this. Like this. This is the wedge shaped spleen. This impression is the gastric impression. This impression is a renal impression. Gastric impression, renal impression and this one is the intermediate border. The second type of shape of spleen is tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. In tetrahedral shape, the spleen will be like this. So, intermediate border will be like this. This one is the gastric impression. This is the renal impression and this one is the colic impression. Colic, gastric and renal. It occurs among 42% of individuals. And the third type C, third type we are going to discuss is triangular. Triangular shape which may occur in about 14% of individuals. Triangular spleen will be like this. This is the intermediate border. This is the gastric impression and the renal impression and this one is the intermediate border. Now we are going to discuss about the measurements of spleen. Generally, measure measurements thickness. What is the thickness of spleen? It is 1 inch. Coming to breadth. It's 3 inch. Length of the spleen is 5 inch and weight is 7 ounces. Thickness is 1 inch, spread 3 inch, length 5 inch and weight 7 ounces. So general thing to remember all of this is Harris's dictum of odd numbers. Harris's dictum of odd numbers where Odd numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So, what it tells is that it is 1 inch in thick, 3 inch in breadth, 5 inch in length, weighs 7 ounces and lies along the 9th, 10th, and 11th ribs. So, this is the Harris dictum of odd numbers about the spleen. Now, we are going to discuss about external features. External features of spleen. 
what are the external features of spleen the spleen presents with number one two ends one is the anterior end and another one is the posterior end and the spleen presents with three borders superior border intermediate border intermediate and inferior border the third thing is the it presents with two surfaces i'll write it here it presents with two surfaces two surfaces one is the diaphragmatic surface diaphragmatic and the other one is the visceral surface visceral surface now i am discussing about the external features of the spleen by drawing the spleen let's look at it coming to spleen spleen is generally like this so this is the general diagram of spleen i am going to explain everything external features i told you two ends right this is the anterior end anterior end this one's the posterior end this is the superior border this is the inferior border and this one's the intermediate border intermediate border two ends anterior and posterior end three borders superior intermediate and inferior border and i told you two surfaces this ones that are seeing in the front this is the visceral surface and the back of the spleen that are that is not visible here it's the diaphragmatic surface so what do you have in the anterior end anterior end is broad right and it describes anterior end is close to the left colic flexure left colic flexure posterior end is narrow and pointed it is related to upper pole of the kidney upper pole of kidney coming to borders here we have the superior border superior border is uh, is having some notches right generally they ask what are these notches in dissection these notches is because spleen develops by fusion of separate masses of lymphoid tissue so there is bulk of lymphoid tissues that come together and fuse together this this indicates that the lobulated development of the spleen then we have the inferior border and the intermediate border near the intermediate border somewhere here you will lie the hilum of spleen so this is the general external features of spleen now i am going to describe about the surfaces of the spleen this is so it has a diaphragmatic surface diaphragm surface is it's smooth and con convex and it is directed upward the second surface is the visceral surface what do you have in the visceral surface the visceral surface is concave it is concave and irregular the visceral surface presents with four impressions four impressions what are those impressions the first one is the gastric impression gastric impression the gastric impression is produced by the fundus of the stomach and it is one of the largest impression the second one is the renal impression renal impression is produced by the left kidney left kidney and is located behind the gastric impression between the intermediate and the inferior border the third one we have is the colic impression colic impression is produced by the left colic flexure it is triangular in shape and situated in the in front of the lateral end the fourth impression generally not seen is the pancreatic impression pancreatic impression is produced by the tail of the pancreas near the 
hilum. So this is about the surfaces of the spleen, and these are all things about the external features of the spleen. Coming to relations of the spleen. What do you have in the relations of spleen? First, we'll be discussing about the peritoneal relations. Peritoneal relations. In peritoneal relations, the spleen is completely enclosed in the peritoneum except at its hilum, from where its two peritoneal folds extend. So we have a spleen here. And except at its hilum, it is entirely covered by the peritoneum. I am using a different color. It is entirely covered by the peritoneum except at its hilum, where it is extended by two ligaments like this. Okay. What is this? This was the gastrosplenic ligament. Gastrosplenic ligament. And this one's the linorenal ligament. Linorenal ligament. This one's the gastrosplenic ligament. So, in the gastrosplenic ligament, which extends from hilum of the spleen to upper one third of greater curvature of the stomach, and it contains short gastric vessels. What do we have in the linorenal ligament? It extends from hilum of the spleen to the anterior surface of left kidney, and it contains three things. One is the tail of the pancreas, splenic vessels and pancreatic lymph nodes. So what uh, linorenal ligament contains? Tail of the pancreas, tail of pancreas and it contains pancreatico, pancreatico splenic nodes, lymph nodes and third thing it contains is the splenic vessels which are nothing but as splenic artery and splenic vein. So these are the peritoneal relations. It is covered by the peritoneum all over except at its hilum where it is divided into two ligaments, linorenal ligament and the gastrosplenic ligament. Gastrosplenic ligament contains short gastric arteries. Linorenal ligament contains the tail of pancreas, pancreatosplenic nodes and the splenic vessels. Now we are discussing about the visceral relations of the spleen. Second thing is the visceral relations. What do we have in the visceral relations? Yes, I just told you, right, external features. What are those impressions? Visceral relations uh, of the spleen will also correspond to its relations. One, first thing is the fundus, fundus of stomach. We have gastric impression, right, produced by the fundus of the stomach. The second thing is the anterior surface of left kidney. Left kidney. We have the renal impression, right, that is produced by the anterior surface of the left kidney. The third thing is the left colic flexure or splenic flexure. Both are the same left conic colic flexure the fourth thing is the tail of the pancreas is also related so visceral relations are nothing but as the these are the four impressions that are produced on the spleen the fundus of the stomach left kidney left colic flexure and the tail of the pancreas